Okay, guys, one last video, and then my work here is done, and Mr. Warner's taking over next week on the next topic, okay? So, um, at this point, we you should have watched all the other videos and tried all the other stuff. This is the last practice on the area between two curves. Um, putting this video here just in case you're still stuck on something because you haven't had a chance to really ask questions or just you need to... Um, to see a particular problem done. All right, I'm gonna do the, all the problems here and then you can kind of skip around to what you need. Um, and I'll give you some tips um, as I do solve each problem, okay? I, um, so let's just jump into it. So sketch the graph, shade the re bounded region, and find the area between, uh, area bounded by the given expressions. Okay, so everything's mixed together so we, know, we don't know exactly which method we're gonna be using here, you know, which way it's gonna be cut. But there's my graph there. And here's my second equation, y equals x, between x equals negative 1. Oh, I'll use more colors. Let's use more colors here. Oh, yeah. Right? Negative 1 and 2. There we go. I think this one is pretty obvious with the upper bound, with the lower bound, right, for myself. So, okay. Right. Minus the x, right, the entire thing is between negative 1 and 2. Okay, we integrate Okay, so I plug in the upper bound, I get 8 thirds plus 2 minus 2, great, those cancel. My lower bound, I'll put it right below that same strategy I've shown you before, right, because it lines up these terms and helps you to figure out what's going to go with what. Okay, I'll distribute that negative in, and I can see 8 thirds plus 1 third, that's 9 thirds, or 3, plus 1, plus 1 half, 4 and a half. Okay, great. Okay. And, you know, you guys can always check your work and check my work. If you think I'd make a mistake on this, that happens, right, um, by just integrating it in your calculator, right? So you can really be checking any, any problem um, as you do these for homework. Okay, so first one, square root of x, All right, and then uh, x over 4, that's a line, it's going to be something like this, okay. I know that there's a y intersect, or there's, there's an intersection at 0, 0, um, another intersection here where the two are going to hit each other, All right. Let's see, let me, let me just think about the point here, rather than try to solve that out, um, 8, right, 8 comma, nope, not 8, sorry. All right, um, let's see, if I do 4, was 4 going to be it? Nope, because 4 gives me 2, and this 4 gives me 1. Uh, maybe I need to solve it out. Bummer. Okay, so I square both sides. x squared, I'm sorry, x equals x squared over 16. All right, so if I move this over, 0 equals x squared minus over 16 minus x. Factor. So I got 0 and 16, okay. 16 was that number, okay. All right, for myself. Right. Okay, so I have that. My integral then is going to be 0 to 16. Let me change that to 16. 0 to 16. Okay, and um, then the upper one is the black function, and the lower one is the pink. I'm going this way. Why am I going this way? Uh, because it just seems to make the most sense for me. Right, really, if I had a choice, I'm going to try to integrate in terms of dx for myself. Okay, right, three halves, two thirds. Okay, x squared over eight. Okay, and I'll plug those in. So I have two thirds. Right, uh, sixteen to the three halves minus 16 squared over 8. The zeros are going to go away nicely. Uh, square root of 16 is 4, 64, so I get 128 over 3. All right, remember that this is 16 times 16. If I don't have a calculator for this, right, then I can reduce that, and that gives me minus 32. All right, if I think of 16 squared as 16 times 16, then I can reduce this. It just makes my math easier. So I have 128 minus 96 over 3. Okay, so I get um, 32 over 3 for myself as my area. And again, I could be wrong in some of the, the little little numbers there. If it's good to check with your calculator on the integration there. Okay, question three. 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna do the y equals x first because that one's easier. Okay, um, x equals y squared. So I know that zero zero. Wait, no, no, it's not zero zero, huh? Okay, um, let's see. Because if I plug in zero, then we'd have a problem there. Okay, um, if I plug in one, I get one. Okay, that's good. That's gonna be a point on here. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, and that if I plugged in like um, for the y value, if I plugged in two. Right for myself, if y was two, then the x would be one quarter. Okay, so it's up here. So okay, so I'm getting something like looks like something like this for myself. Okay, right. It's the y that's squared, so the other option is going to be down here. Okay, and it says the other bounding function is y equals two. Okay, so here's my region right here. Okay, there's my region. Okay, so in this one I have a couple options. I could try to slice it up and down or side to side. I'm going to choose side to side. Again, side to side is better in this case because you have the same function as the upper limit as the upper bound and the same function as lower bound for the entire thing. You want the upper minus the lower and you want to use the same function the entire time if possible. So this is going to be, a, this, this rectangle is going left to right. The thickness of the rectangle is dy, so that tells me that that's what I'm integrating in terms of how thick is that? Infinitely thin, uh, infinitely skinny at dy, all right? So I just need to need, I need the chain, the difference in, I need to find the, how far apart these are. Again, these equations need to be in terms of y, and they already are. The larger function is x equals y, so I'm going to do y, larger function. This is the lower function. Okay? All right? Pink is larger, black is smaller, All right? So it's pink minus black. It needs to be in terms of y because this is a dy there. Okay? Uh, my bounds. Okay, well, we got that. Okay, that's great. So this is the lowest bound for the y. We just need to, oh, and then 2 is the upper bound. So not bad at all. Integrate. All right, remember that this is y to the negative 2. So if I add 1, positive, okay? 2 to 1, plug it in, all right? 2 plus 1 half minus 1 half plus 1. I'm subtracting those ones. So, oh, that cancels. So I just left with an area of 1. Okay. There we go. Next one. Okay. Right. So um, let's see. I'll graph this one first. Y equals negative X. going to come down like this. That graph. Um, we graphed something. This this kind of looks similar to a problem we did on the last video. Um, so if if y was zero, then x is two in this case. I think it was the other way last time. I think it was just a different sign last time. <clears throat> if x was zero, that means that y is going to be the square root of two, positive or negative square root of two. So it's going to be like here, here. And you guys, it doesn't matter exactly that you graph it perfectly. You just want the general shape, enough of the general shape, so you can see that hey, this one. The rectangles that I'm creating from the upper to lower are going left to right, okay? The thickness of this is dy. We have to figure out how far apart the x values are, or, you know, the upper minus the lower, sorry, upper minus the lower, okay? The upper one, the black function is this one, okay? It's already in terms of y, so there's the upper minus the lower. Oh, wait, this, this is not good. This isn't ready yet. Now where it's in terms of y, okay? Again, it has to be in terms of y because this is a dy there, right? Where the, where the intersection's there, this one it might be worth just trying to solve it out, okay? I'm gonna replace this x with negative y. So if I do that, I'll put that right here. So two minus y squared. And remember x is negative y, so I'll put a negative y there. I'll move this over. Okay, so that's going to factor to y minus 2 and y plus 1. So we have our y values as 2 and negative 1. If I look at my graph, that totally seems reasonable. That's a y value of negative 1. That seems reasonable. And this looks like it's you know, 2 for myself. Okay. I don't know that the, you know, my graph's not perfect. It's just telling me that, that I have reasonable answers there. Okay. Integrate. Plug in. Lower 
we're bound. Minus, minus and negative becomes positive there. And then, okay, negative distributes in. Okay, so I'm going to get for this 6 minus 9 thirds, so minus 3, plus 2 minus a half. So 3, 5 minus a half, 4 and a half. Gosh, that looks familiar. I feel like we just did a problem like that. I could be wrong. Okay, so we got this. Okay. That. Okay. Find my intersections there. Okay, 0 and 4 for the x values. And x definitely seems like the way to go here. We can just do upper bound and lower bound. Yes, we could go the other way. But, I mean, as I said, I always prefer, if I can, keep it in the dx. So 0 to 4. Okay. Uh, upper is the pink, so it's 4x. Lower is the black. Okay, plug it in. Lower bound is 0, so it goes away. This is 96 thirds, so we're left with 32 thirds. Again, man, I feel like we're getting the same numbers over and over again, so... Um.